Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. And I know a lot of you guys have been wondering where I am. And I just want to let you know that this bird has not flown the coop. I'm still here. And I'm sorry for leaving you guys in the lurch not knowing what was going on with me. But I was sick. <laughs> now, so you guys can hear, I'm a little bit sick still. Um, I know that the next question is going to be, do you have COVID-19? I don't know. <laughs> I have just had so much happen to me since I left Arizona to come back to Colorado to Mooch Dock so I could be near my family. And I have not gotten um, a nasal swab test, but um, that's because I've been sick for a month and it's just a little bit too late for that. So I have been getting emails and messages from you guys like crazy telling me that you're concerned and I'm in your prayers and you were worried about my family. I'm so sorry, you guys, to not let you know what was going on. But literally, I was so sick that, first of all, I couldn't make a video. And um, second of all, I know all of you out there are concerned about your own families and your friends and your jobs. And I just didn't want to put out something that would make you worry more <laughs> until I knew that I was better. And I am. Yay! So, let me give you a little bit of an idea about what's happened with me, because I know you're curious. So, I left Arizona, and I was camping by myself for a couple weeks there, and I drove back to Colorado to be closer to my mom, who had a chest cold at the time. She's fine, by the way. It really was just a chest cold. Um, but I wanted to be closer to her and to my boyfriend, Doug, um, because he works in Colorado and didn't feel comfortable, even though he's now working remotely, um, going all the way to Arizona. So I came to Colorado. And like I told you guys, um, I was mooch docking on a friend's property. Well, note to self, don't go back to Colorado in March, which is the snowiest month. So you guys know I just had a ton of solar put on my rig so I could boondock longer. And um, I took the money from what would have gone into a generator and put it into the solar. So I didn't have a hookup and I didn't have a generator and it just snowed and snowed and snowed. We got like three major storms that were like between eight inches and a foot. So we're up there and it's a great spot and really grateful to have been there. But um, the very first weekend Doug came, it snowed like a foot and we had no water because I mean, seriously, the 12 volt was so low the pump went out because the batteries went out. Um, no heat <laughs> and no power, um, sometimes for one, two days. And um, we had propane, but we were using those little baby tanks and we were going through one a day because I didn't have a skirt on and it was like nine degrees outside. So Doug and I were outside a lot in this like weather. And the week after that, which I guess is about three weeks now ago, we both were getting like headaches and we were really tired and we were just crabby, you know, just like really in a foul mood. And I thought, oh, this RV thing's not for him. And, you know, I felt bad that he was in the RV and all these things were going wrong. Um, but then I just started to get sicker. So one night I said to Doug, um, he was sitting across the room and all of a sudden I said, I think you should leave. And he said, what? <laughs> I said, I think you should go because he has an apartment in Denver. And um, I could tell I was gonna start coughing and it was never gonna stop. And if I did have it, I didn't want him anywhere around me. So it took some convincing um, that I got him to leave. My mother was not happy with that, you guys. Um, and, um, you know, I was really knocked on my butt after that, really knocked on my butt. And um, I'll tell you, um, I don't know what this was, but um, I did have the symptoms of COVID-19, but you know, um, when I got sick in Colorado, there, there were no tests unless you had a, a temperature over 103, which I did not. So I just kind of um, just hunkered down and tried to get through it. But, you know, there were a couple times I was trapped up in the mountains in my RV in some serious snow. And I was thinking, if I need to go to the hospital, can I get down this hill? <laughs> What's more dangerous, right? But I'm very lucky. Um, I got better. Um, I am better. Um, I'm still, um, you can hear, um, you know, a little froggy, a little breathless. Um, I get tired. Um, it's been about a month. And um, again, you guys, I don't know. I don't know. And I know a lot of you out there are in the same boat I am. You know, you start to get a headache and you go, oh my God, do I have it? Or you know somebody that's had it. And I'll tell you, um, 
In my life, I have also had scarlet fever and dengue fever. Now, I'm not a hypochondriac. I've only been to the emergency room once in my life. I've never spent the night in the hospital. Um, in fact, when I got scarlet fever, I was in college and um, I didn't want to miss my finals and I was really sick. But I thought after the finals, then I'll go to the med center. Well, I broke out in these little splotches everywhere. And I thought, oh God, I have chicken pox because I've never had it. And um, I went into the health center and it turns out it was scarlet fever, which I didn't know at the time is just strep throat run amok. I refused to go to the doctor. So it turned into scarlet fever and I was fine, you know, with the penicillin. Then I got dengue fever in my 30s in um, Costa Rica, which is a, a mosquito borne illness. And um, oh my God, that was heinous. So I'll tell you, um, good, better, best. Dengue fever was worse than this for me, but scarlet fever was not as bad as whatever the heck it was that I just had. Um, and so again, you guys, I apologize for not being around. Um, I really, I really wanted to respect your time and I didn't want to put out any crap and I didn't want to put out anything that would make any of you worry, but I'm back <laughs> and very excited to be back. And, um, I'm going to be putting out the videos that you guys have been waiting for. And I'll tell you, I want to give you some thoughts about my RV life in general and maybe your RV life. Um, it's tough right now. It's tough for all of us to figure out where to go and what's going to be open and what's going to be closed and, you know, how far we can go and how long we can stay and what services are going to be there. And, you know, being down for 30 days sucked. You know, I kept making this joke all last year because I really kind of uh, ran myself into the ground last year with a bunch of projects. And I kept saying, I just want 30 days to sit in a chair and watch a bird fly by. That was like my favorite joke. I just kept saying that. Well, listen to the universe, you know, because um, <laughs> I got what I wanted. I got to sit in a chair for 30 days, but it was no fun. Um, but it gave me some time to reflect. And I've said this a long time ago, so maybe you guys have heard this, but I don't live in an RV because I want to live in an RV necessarily, although it's rad and I love it and you might love it too. I live in an RV because it, it's a conduit that allows me to pursue the other things that I wanted out of my life because my expenses were so much less, um, I could leave my corporate job and pursue some of the other stuff that I love. And um, you know what, on reflection, I found that I was not spending my time on the stuff that I loved. And so, um, you know, I still, I love YouTube. Don't get me wrong. I've got a lot of stuff that's gonna come out with you guys. Um, and you know, my last two books, I spent a lot of time on and, uh, but I have been wanting to paint and work on the suspense series um, that I've been working on. So um, it was a nice wake up call for me. I'm gonna work on my immunity because I mean, clearly um, I could have done better in that regard and um, really focusing on what it is I want out of my life. And I'm sure all of you are doing the same thing because you know, like I said in my TED talk, you guys, it's all about time. We only have a finite amount of time we can't make more. And I'm sure that that's really coming into focus uh, for a lot of you like it has for me recently. And um, I'm very grateful that I'm in the RV now because I don't have a mortgage and I already work remotely, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that um, I don't need a good kick in the pants once in a while to tell me that I need to refocus on the things that make me happy and the things that are important. Um, so I'll tell you, if you live in an RV like I do, you know, you're bobbing, you're weaving just like I did. I had to leave my mooch docking spot. Um, I'm in a new spot, more on that soon. You know, some things work, some things don't work. You have to pivot. Um, but even if you're in an RV now, traveling from place to place every 14 days, let's say if you're a boondocker, is great and it's fun and we get a little antsy when we don't get to do it. But think about the things maybe that you wanted to do in your RV life and focus on that. My advice. And if you're not in an RV yet, but you want to go, you know, if I weren't in an RV and I was still in the planning stage, I'd be real antsy to do that right now because um, there is a lot more freedom even uh, for, I think, me during this time because I get to go outside. And I get to watch that bird fly by. I wouldn't have been able to do that in an apartment. And I get to make choices about what work I do um, because of the RV. So if you're in a planning stage right now and you want to do it, don't give up. 
you know, now's a great time to do some research because we're all home. A lot of us are home. Um, and respect to the people that are not home. My God, I'm so grateful for everybody that's out there working. But, um, you know, there's a chance to get a used RV now. Maybe start out in an RV park, get your feet under you, get some remote work. And by the way, if you're new to my channel or you just haven't checked it out, uh, my last two books will guide you through all that stuff. The first one is called uh, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, um, which shows you everything about like state residency, licenses, how to camp, different rigs, all that stuff. And then the last one I did, Work From Home, has over 300 job resources um, for remote work. And look, seriously, you guys, I'm not just trying to plug my books here. I want to tell you that um, I've had so many close friends and family, like people close to me that I've known all my life or 20 years that are like, I don't know, I can't find a job. Nobody's hiring. Everybody's furloughed. And I'm like, I know them. So I'm like, no, you've got this skill and this skill and this skill. And let me send you the book because you'd be able to find remote work right now. There's more demand for remote work. So I tell you about that stuff because right now it's really easy to feel stuck, right? We all get our feet knocked out from under us. I know I just did. Um, but personally, I want to take that as an opportunity to uh, figure out what's important and retool. And maybe I have to retool again, like we all do, and just try and move closer the most that we can. Um, so just know that there are ways out there to keep going. And um, I think everything's going to become a little clear this year about um, what we can do. I'm hoping that the outdoor spaces will open back up, especially like, you know, next fall with long-term visitor areas and stuff like that. Fingers crossed, um, because I'm hoping that's my plan. And um, I've got lots of videos coming out for you guys that are going to help you plan or mooch dock or all kinds of other stuff. Just some really inspiring interviews also that I did. Um, so look out for those in the next couple of weeks. And really quick, I just want to say, again, like I'll cry, you guys, because when I was sick and I got your emails and the messages on social media, I mean, I, it really lifted me up. And I know a lot of you were really concerned about me. And now I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. So if anybody out there is feeling a little down or sick, or their loved one is sick, or you lost someone, please know that I'm here thinking about you too. And tomorrow's another day, Scarlett. And we're all going to figure this out, and we're all going to be okay. I appreciate you, and I'm thinking and praying about all of you also. And remember, everybody, it's about time and what you're going to do with your time. And you can still have happy travels and be free, even if it's only up here for now. I'll see all of you guys soon. Thank you for sticking with me during this time. I'm back, people. This bird is back. And I am going to have a lot of content out for you on the blog and on YouTube and on social media in the next couple weeks. So keep a lookout. Thanks, you guys. Bye.